Welcome to the Crypto Teaching. Guys, you know I come back with that second video just to make you think. Now basically we have Brian Armstrong again coming. Now basically they redid their user agreement uh, and also basically it has the UK in here for November. It's effective November of 2020. Now the fact is that we see cryptocurrency squeaking its way into banks. And we know in the UK we know who runs that, the Rothschilds. So you just don't come into London and the Wales and be able to move crypto around. And just like he stated in this video, he said money is going to go digital. He didn't say F, he said it's going to go digital. And of course, with the C word, they took out the paper bills, the coins. As you know, we have a coin shortage to move us over to a cashless society. Now, we also see biotech fighting the C word, as we know, Microsoft using blockchain. So we see blockchain, cryptocurrencies, and we see the C word moving this all forward, putting the foot on the gas, speeding it up. Now, of course, we have the Fed talking about zero interest rates until 2023. I went over that. We're definitely not going to be there until 2023. But we know that we are going to have inflation. And inflation, what? They cause a problem. They wait for the reaction and then come in with the solution. So we already see the solution creeping behind the reaction. So we already have the cause here. The cause is already here. They're just waiting on the reaction. We don't have any stimulus. Small businesses are closing. So they're waiting for the collapse and then cryptocurrencies come in, swoop in, universal basic income. There you go. Guys, that's all I have for you. Enjoy the rest of the video. And don't forget about the stock channel. Y'all have a wonderful day. This package being proposed, the Federal Reserve has cut interest rates to zero. They've removed the reserve requirements on, on banks uh, down to zero percent, which I don't think has ever happened in U.S. history. There's bipartisan you know, interest in sending thousand dollar payments to every single American and there's bailouts being proposed and quantitative easing and basically a massive expansion of the money supply um, is being proposed all around the world. Um, at the same time, just about every sector of the economy is really struggling. So um, manufacturing people don't want to go into factories um, if they can't social distance and retail has been decimated. Travel is really struggling. Um, we might even see some of these um, investment banks needing to be bailed out. So um, in some ways, it's incredibly lucky that we as a tech company are able to continue to work at all because almost every sector of the economy has been really struggling. So what does this actually mean in practice? Well, when you put a bunch more money into the, the ecosystem and the number of goods is not really going up due to manufacturing slowdowns, that means over time there's going to be higher prices and it's basically going to be inflation. And when that happens, people try to look for alternative investments that are inflation proof, that basically have guaranteed scarcity baked into them. So that is a great case for Bitcoin. And it's also, there's other asset classes like real estate and things like that, that are hedges against inflation that we're gonna see people move into. At the same time, um, money is going digital. So it's never been particularly hygienic to work with fiat currencies. You know, who wants to be passing around paper bills and, and coins, especially now that there's this global pandemic happening. So I don't know about you, but all the payments I've been doing as I've been ordering things online and make, getting food delivery, it's like it's moved 100% to digital. And I think tech is going to be a big winner from this, right? So, yes, we are one of the only sectors of the economy that can actually keep making some forward progress because it's kind of amazing. A thousand people at Coinbase have transitioned um, to work from home all over the world. And it's not just um, us working from home. I mean, there's online education is flourishing, telemedicine. Um, entertainment companies, you know, Netflix and um, gaming companies. And at the same time, there's this huge kind of renaissance happening in biotech where um, people are investing in, in new kinds of therapies. And it's almost like a call to arms, like the whole world has gotten more interested in biotech. So these are the tools that are allowing the economy to continue to flourish and move forward. And also it's giving us the tools to actually combat the virus um, itself with biotech. So the good news is that Bitcoin was built for moments like this. This is the headline from the 2008 financial crisis that was encoded in the genesis block of Bitcoin, which led a lot of people to speculate that Satoshi's motives around creating Bitcoin was actually um, as a new financial system that was more resilient to these kinds of shocks and manipulation. 
Um, and so Bitcoin is amazing. It's it's global. It's inflation proof. It is digital. It's it's the money that people need right now in this moment. So what is our role in this? Well, we're at the very beginning of this trend. Um, this new economy, really, this parallel new economy is being created, the crypto economy. And kind of like the Internet, it's in a very um, you know nascent stage, just about eight to 10 years in after being created. And just like the internet, it needed to go from dial-up to broadband, and it needed to have the web browser become more usable. You know, crypto is going through all of these growing pains. It needs to become more scalable. It needs to become more usable for average people. And that's how we're going to get it to be 100 million and a billion people. And that's the infrastructure that Coinbase is really providing. So this all dovetails nicely into the vision and the mission and strategy that we've been pursuing all along. The vision is the why behind what we're doing. The mission is what we're actually going to go build in the world to make that vision a reality. And then the strategy is how we're going to get there. So let's go through each of these. Our vision is about economic freedom for every person and business out there. And economic freedom means sound money for everybody. It means property rights. It means free trade. It means you can go work at the company you want to work at, start the company you want to start. And we're excited about economic freedom because it has all these amazing positive downstream effects in society. It makes happy, healthy, productive uh, societies. So what we're actually going to do is we're going to use cryptocurrency, this unique moment in history, uh, to go build a more open financial system that creates economic freedom for people all over the world. And there's three steps to our strategy, really, at the parent company level, at the highest level. Um, the first one's just about enabling crypto investing. So investment is still the primary uh, driver that brings new people into the cryptocurrency ecosystem, whether that's retail or institutional customers. So we need to make sure we're providing the great tools for them, um, the assets they want to trade, you know, the requirements for more and more customers and payment methods all over the world to come in and still um, trade and own a little piece of this currency because that's how we're going to get the next 100 million people into crypto. Second, we actually need to start to connect together a crypto economy so that it's not just about investment. And so what we've done is we've laid out a strategy where um, now that you know Coinbase is people's primary financial account where they're storing their crypto, what new things can we connect into that? Um, our own products is, is the way to start there. So that's things like Coinbase debit card, Coinbase earn, um, staking, margin lending, commerce, peer-to-peer uh, -peer payments, remittance. So the more products we plug into that primary financial account, they're storing their crypto at Coinbase, the more sticky they are in our ecosystem and product. But it's not just going to be about a closed ecosystem at Coinbase. We need to grow the entire crypto economy. And that's the third step in the strategy. So what this means is we're going to start to surface third-party apps and, and dApps in our own products. Um, we're going to use things like Coinbase Ventures to build and scale an entire ecosystem. You're going to see us externalize our shared services on the back end that have helped us build our products with other people in the ecosystem. Because at the end of the day, we need this to be a global crypto economy. Coinbase can't do it all. At the beginning of this year, we talked about what our priorities would be in 2020, and um, these remain the same. So we're focused on international growth, things like Japan, Singapore, making sure we can stay um, operating in our existing markets where, as new requirements come online. Shared services, which basically means we're cleaning up a bunch of tech debt and we're deduplicating effort across our multiple products so that we can um, move more quickly. And also have a more interconnected uh, suite of products. And then we're going to grow monthly transacting users because that's the signal that shows that a real crypto economy is actually starting. It's not just about the investment phase anymore. And lastly, we're going to grow LMD revenue, low market dependence revenue. And what this is going to allow us to do is make our business more predictable. So these four priorities are, are still what we're going to focus on in 2020, but we need to come to grips with um, the reality of where we are today, which is there's a new top level priority above all of these, which is number one, we need to keep all of you, um, you and your families should prioritize putting yourselves in safety, right? And so that's the number one priority. And we also just need to make sure we can maintain business as usual during all this. But, you know, we need to basically come to terms with um, some of our ambitions around 2020. We may need to scale some of these things back given this new reality and put those top two things first. The safety of our employees and our families and just continuing business as usual to make sure we don't go offline um, during these periods of crazy market volatility.